Oh, that was not pleasant, right? Oh, I'm tired. This machine right here is being used all over the world every single day to spray really nasty, harmful chemicals against the most powerful and the most deadliest animal of this planet. By now we know mosquitoes. Now, you and I, we don't really think of mosquitoes as deadly, right? We think of them just as an annoying pest, buzzing and biting. But what if I told you that every day, all over the world, over a million people get infected with the deadly dengue virus, which is a mosquito-borne disease? Scientists invented some chemical compounds after the Second World War to reduce the growing mosquito population in the world and the problems with mosquitoes. Sadly, 80 years down the line, we are still using the same thing. The funny thing is, you can use as much of this chemical as possible, as much of it, but at the end of the day, it's just window dressing. It just plays with your mind. The reason? Just two single words. Insecticide resistance. Which simply means that you can use a standard dose of a certain chemical, but it won't kill the mosquitoes. Moreover, these compounds, they are so harmful that they they do not discriminate. They kill off the bumblebees, the honeybees, the butterflies, and are harmful to human health. They cause huge damage to the marine and to the terrestrial ecosystem. So, on this island of Kunfunadu, we started using nasty chemicals almost 25 years ago to tackle our mosquito issues. But not until three years ago, we realized that it wasn't actually working. With our backs against the wall, we had to come up with a sustainable green solution. And our solution was trapping. This trap is standing right beside me. Now, you might ask, how does this trap catch a mosquito? Well, this trap mimics the most favorite thing a mosquito has on the planet, a human body. This smells like a worn t-shirt, like sweaty, worn t-shirt. Mosquitoes can see this trap from a distance of 10 meters. And additionally, this trap, which you can see on the screen, mimics human breath by producing carbon dioxide with the mixture of sugar, water, and yeast, thus attracting mosquitoes. Together, these components are perfect lure. So, you can already see that how difficult and how challenging this situation is, right? And probably the next question which you're gonna ask me is that, but does this trap actually work? Does it really work? Well, As you can see in this catch bag, this is almost 3,000 mosquitoes we caught in the beginning of our mosquito project from a single trap in 24 hours. Looking at the catch rate, we decided to move ahead with the project. We laid out six traps per hectare on this beautiful island of Kunfunadu. And we mapped each and every trap location using our geographical information system. We were eagerly waiting for our first catch. Mosquito pile. This mosquito pile is actually the mosquitoes we caught in the very first month, back in June 2019. You want to know the number of mosquitoes which is there? 113,085. Now you might ask, 
Akib, how is the data so exact? Well, we hand count each and every of our dead victim. <laughs> Thank you. And believe me or not, you can actually make a living counting mosquitoes. I get paid for counting them. Since the beginning of this project, back in 19th of June, 2019, till this point of time, almost over a million mosquitoes have been siphoned out using these traps from this ecosystem. We have managed to reduce the population of southern house mosquitoes by 98% and the same dengue-causing mosquitoes which you have in Bahatol, in the Maldives, by 95%. Thank you. Thank you. By doing so, ladies and gents, we actually manage to eliminate the risk of chikungunya, Zika, and dengue out of this little piece of paradise. Moreover, the bumblebees, the pollinators, the different other beneficial insects, we can see them coming back into our ecosystem. So the biodiversity is getting restored. And the most important thing, the nasty and harmful chemicals are no longer stifling the delicate balance of our ecosystem. Now, probably you will tell me that, Akib, your job is almost done. You might just go sit back and relax. Well, no. The target has always been zero. An island without a single mosquito. And we pledge to achieve that going forward. Now, do you think it is possible to go down to zero from an island which is 41 hectares? I would say yes, because almost eight years ago, a famous American public health epidemiologist named Mr. Fred Soper did manage to achieve the similar feat from South America. You can see that's South America in 1947. The red dots means that those areas were covered with the same dengue-causing mosquitoes. Believe me or not, by 1965, in only 18 years' time, this gentleman managed to eliminate these mosquitoes from an area of almost 11 million square kilometers, an area which is three times the size of my home country, India. Now I would request you guys to have a closer look to this map on the slide. Do you see Maldives there? Well, some of you at the back might be having some difficulty because it's really teeny tiny. I will help you out. That's Maldives in 2022. Guys, only 300 square kilometers. Only 300. So if Mr. Fred Soper managed to eliminate the risk of public health by eliminating mosquitoes from an area of 11 million square kilometers back in 1947, then with better means, we should be able to eliminate mosquitoes from our beautiful Bayatol, from our beautiful Maldives, right? Now the biggest question of tonight, why going down to zero is so important? Well, if we go down to zero, that means our impact will be permanent. And nobody will ever be able to use this particular phrase, insecticide resistance. According to WHO, each and every year, almost a million lives is being lost because of one or other mosquito-borne diseases. Only dengue, which is prevalent in the Maldives, takes 36,000 lives every year. That's not cool, right? Living in 2022 and 
losing almost a million lives every year because of this teeny tiny insect. We are, we are publishing so many papers. We are doing so many research works on this particular topic. But we are still losing this battle. Another important question which comes to my mind is that, is it really wise to take mosquitoes out of the food chain completely? Well, researchers have shown that mosquitoes, they only count for less than 5% of diet for their predators, such as birds, bats, dragonflies. So the impact on the food chain will really be minor, whereas the impact on the public health side of it will be huge. I'm talking to you from this beautiful biotol, protected area in the Maldives. The underwater life thrives under the ocean over here. If you ask me, Akib, what's your dream? Then I'll tell you that my dream is to see this protection furthered and applied to the land above. I want to see a biotol free of mosquito, but by not using a single drop of nasty chemical. Because since the last nine minutes, while I, am, I was on the stage, there's almost 6,000 human beings all around the world who has gotten infected with dengue, dengue virus. And some of them, guys, will die. Do you want, some of you sitting in the crowd from beautiful Bayatol, do you want a Maldivian mother losing their child because of a mosquito bite, which is so teeny tiny? Do we really want that? No, right? Then let's pull up our sleeves. Let's go out there, out in the open, on the field, and try and get our biotol, our Maldives mosquito free by not using a single drop of chemical. Thank you very much. Oh.